we have DHCP enabled. And that means we can't communicate with any of our PLCs. And so we're going to go and change our um, IP configuration. And this has changed many ways, and I know there's faster ways, but the most predictable way from really, I think Windows 95 until, I assume Windows 11, I haven't seen Windows 11 yet, is just to go to your control panel and select control panel and then find network and internet. And then we wanna to go to our network and sharing center. And then on the right, you're gonna see change adapter settings. All right, and in this case, I, I have this stripped down. This is kind of the same PC we use at the um, at the um, our training is we only have one ethernet, but we could have multiple ones. In fact, let me open up this one, just so we can see what we could be trying to navigate. And so in this case, you usually will have multiple adapters. So we have a Wi-Fi and you know, your Wi-Fi is gonna probably be on, you know, even though it probably will, you typically won't connect over it. We have a Bluetooth connection. And in this case, we have a virtual box because that's what you're actually seeing here is a virtual machine. And then we have Ethernet. And usually yours is going to be called Ethernet or Wired or LAN. But one thing you can always do, and actually I don't have it where I can reach it easy, is you can unplug what you think is the one going to the machine. And all of a sudden it's going to have an X on it just like this one. So that's one way you can identify definitely which device you're working with. But all right, so we're going to double click on that. And then we want to find its properties. And that's going to bring us to this craziness right here that has a bunch of things that we don't know what are. But we're going to be looking for something called TCP. And it's either just going to be called TCP IP if it's a really old computer, or in this case, it'll start being called TCP V4. We do have this V6, but we're not really adopting it much yet. So we want to double click on the version 4. And we see we've got obtain IP address automatically. And what that is, is it's looking for somebody to tell it, hey, what IP address do you want me on? Well, we don't know it. And so this is the time that, yeah, you, you really need to keep track of your IP addresses because, you know, even here, the, the first, and that's one thing I love about the compact logic center training classes. So, you, know, we, you know, we get to this point there and I'm like, well, what's the IP address? Everybody points at that Mac right away. It says Enet address. That's got to be it. Well, no, that's not it. That's a MAC address. It's not going to help us out right now. And yeah, there's nothing here. And yeah, somebody will probably tell me in chat, well, some of them have a display. And you know, this one has a great display right here if I can get it to focus. But this morning I noticed the display buttons have gone out. So even if it has a display, you better have it written down somewhere. So let's go through a wrong way because, all right, we don't know a lot about IP addresses. But we go and we know that we've heard of 192.168.1. So I'm just going to type 192.168. Actually, let's start with zero, just so we can be wrong. This is not right for this network we have. I'm just going to randomly throw 107 in there. Now, here's one cool feature. As you know, you have to have this subnet. If while you're up here, you'll just hit the tab button, it'll fill in the subnet to what it probably needs to be based off of that IP. We're gonna click that though. We're gonna hit okay. And we're gonna see that, yeah, that's really not gonna do us any good. Except for this IP address here, we'll change here in just a little bit probably. Let's just give it a second. There it goes, it blinks out. Well, and apparently we need to be patient. And you know, while we're being patient, if you haven't already hit that like button on this video and subscribe to go ahead and do that. But yeah, actually, I, you know, and honestly, I, I don't do this often. Well, I shouldn't say I don't do this often wrong. We do have a cool tool that'll help us um, discover the IP addresses. But uh, so yeah, I, I rarely get in this situation, but that may never come back. I'm not really sure. But I do know the IP address of this one. It is 192.168, and then it's gonna be on the one network. And honestly, I don't even know for sure which one is which from there, but let's go back into here and let's change that. 
Actually, let, let's, do, let's do that a little bit better. Let's say now we call somebody and we're like, oh, they say it's, well, it's 192, 168, 1, 171. We do have a few tools to help us out here. So as old school as it sounds, we're going to go to the start menu and let's type command prompt. And that's going to bring up this ancient looking DOS thing. And this may be the most important thing you understand in um, when you're troubleshooting Ethernet. And yeah, I know it looks old, but it's not. So we have a ping command. So the guy on the other end of the phone told us that he thinks it's 192.168.1.171. So I can ping space and then that IP address and I hit enter. Okay. And you know, I don't really care what it says here as much as, you know, if it doesn't say reply from and that IP address that we were trying to ping, then we failed. So then there's another command. It's called IP config. And this is going to give you what your IP configuration is. Now I always tell everybody, I do not do networking classes. But Tim's networking rules say that these first three octets, which are the kind of the groupings of numbers, need to be the same. And this last one, whoops, needs to be unique. So right now, 192.168.1 is not the same as 192.168.0. So we're never going to be able to connect between these two. So let's go back to our Ethernet configuration. And we're going to change it. Now you have to be really careful doing this because if you happen to put an IP address in that is already used on a network, you can make devices cease to talk and you can take systems down. So really this is where you've got to document these IP addresses out. So we're going to click OK to that. And even before we go back to RS links, one, let's go ahead and hit that IP config so we see the difference. So see now it says 192.168.1.107 and our IP we're going for was 1.171. So now when, I, you know, I quickly did that. I didn't tell you. If you hate typing, if you'll hit the up arrow, it'll give you your last command. And if you hit the up arrow again, it'll give you the command before that. And then we can go down. So we can scroll through the commands we've entered. And I'm just going to hit enter there. And all right, now we have a reply. And, you know, mainly we're getting a reply from the IP address that we pinged. And yeah, it says something about some bytes, some times, and some TTLs. And as long as we get that, then we're ready to communicate. So now we're going to go back to Factory Talk. Oops. And click our Ethernet. And bam, just by having our IP address configured on our network, we discovered all these PLCs right here. 